was a game of real meaning here on the Spanish capital. A derby to truly savour. Stay tuned and we'll bring you every kick of the ball. The police decide to reopen the Ronald's men mystery case. They discover that Davis has been signing checks using Platt's name. They also learn that Davis's wife is about 20 years old, at least 30 years younger than he is. They have two girls, a three-year-old and a ten-month-old. Hospital records show that both children were registered with the last name. Facing Real Madrid. Yeah, the talking is over. The game plan is set. Now it's up to the players to go out and earn their score. There's nothing the managers can do once the first whistle goes. I think, Jerry, we're in for a cracker. This is something very much amiss. Why was this man doing that? Posing us and then posing it. One of the first thoughts was to arrest for a defence under official circumstances. And he later was here. Yeah, 
dumb right. The woman known as Noelle Davis throws British police an unexpected curve. She is posing as Elaine Burns, the ex-girlfriend of the murderer of Ron Instead, they find 30,000 pounds in cash, 17 gold bars, and safety deposit keys that suggest your suspected murderer is a millionaire. Okay. They also find oh, what you doing? photographs of David Davis in the way. It appears Davis may be the father of his daughter's children. The police have stumbled into a twisted uh, world that may involve theft, incest, and finally murder. Jeez! Investigators discover uh, the GPS. Uh, it is new technology in 1996, so it is sent to the manufacturer to see if it holds for the terrible. The cold case is now at the point. The trail leads to the fisherman who caught one class in his neck ten weeks early. He reveals evidence that was overlooked when police took one class body from the nets. That was a small angle from the family. The men discovered that the last of the body had been moved from the boat. And we were cleaning the nets out. Unfortunately for police, Copic has given the anchor away. Another fisherman's walking on the quay and he said, I'm just from the speedboat. Let me just see my speedboat. Can I have it? So help yourself down. It takes police a month to track it down. It is sent to forensic experts who may be able to see if the anchor holds hidden clues. Well, as you can see, Real Madrid hasn't had too much of the ball, but they won't mind winning this game. And why? Um, because, because their counter-attack is absolutely fantastic. As soon as they mention the anchor, Near to where he was found. And 
Well, this is the way they possibly can be moved by aviation cars. Um, to investigate them, we need not to study uh, the ocean currents in the air that will occur in the Oh, you the bastard! Oh, the direction of the Jesus Christ! Uh, right. uh, very very still very much in this game. Oh, you're a waste of time. They need to stick to the game plan and try and force the game a little bit in the second half. Pathologist Guillaume Fernando recalls the wound on the back of Ronald Price. Oh, that's not good enough. Ah, oh, jeez. The business was still alive when he went into the world of blood. There's only one possibility that he had been stunned and being hit on the head with that heavy blood weapon. Sufficient with nothing senseless, but not the killing of the blood. And he's fired over the corner. Well, he's going to the bench and hustled simply down to the ground. He's going back to the world. And can forensic science prove it? Fernando gets to it. Ronald Clark oh. is in the in 100 days. He's brought out to fight. Where's that punt? Investigators give Dr. Guillaume Fernando an anchor identical to the one caught in John Cooper's fishing nets. He makes a critical discovery. He had proof that the sun was there, one or near the spit. Dominant first half display from Tommy Cruz in this game. Well, Derek, he certainly was a good 45 minutes for the lad once he got the goal to give him the lead. And it looks very, very lively as well. And they're good points here, these two cruises. And they're exactly for the shadow of the Fernando reports his discovery to police. Investigators now turn to more forensic experts to prove that David Davis killed Ronald Platt. The anchor found in the nets with Ron Platt's body was sent to the UK's Elite Forensic Science Services lab. Dr. Ian Gray is assigned to the case. Oh, no, it's not a shot. It's a control that in the same way with Mr. Platt and Slade and the likely contact points there would be the trousers and the belt that he was wearing at the time of going to the So we have to see whether there's a transfer between our friend and the belt, maybe the leather to the anchor. Craig first has the belt examined under a conventional microscope. Football for you to enjoy from La Liga coming up here on EA TV. And there's definitely a chink in the belt around the upper and lower surfaces were folding over, which would suggest that some kind of force or some pressure would have been exerted in that area. When the inside of the belt in those areas was examined, it was less for the upper of sort of scratches and operations in that area. And um, looking at that in the right uh, day, uh, you can see those operations in the fact that the translucent deposits that have actually been added to, uh, to the belt. They all find themselves in a position of menace. And Yeah! Ray orders the belt scan with an electron microscope, a high tech device that can determine if the abrasions came from the zinc coated anchor. Jones puts a sample from the belt into the microscope. The device scans for invisible evidence of metallic residue. That Paul Zink up here, you can see that the two components we have here and here. So, now. The images correspond to the position of the tag zinc. The belt is laced with zinc in one particular place, alongside Ron Platt's left hip. Crime scene okay. analyst Brian Gallimore conducts an impromptu experiment. Oh, looks by a Once I saw the anchor, I could see the tag zinc in the red. Then it was very easy to slip inside. My oh, that's useless. Terrible cross. I actually kink the belt and hang nicely on the left hip to the end of the anchor, which went and landed here. It was positioned just above the knee on the left-hand side. That should be a really interesting match. Your atmosphere, I'm sure we're going to get an absolute belt in there. Losing on the deceased. 
So this was a highly significant find. Then the anchor itself is examined. Months later, the forensics tell the same story. When you look at the anchor itself, you can see that at the base of the shank, or brand oh my which suggests that some material has been put right And we got one thing wrong, that was the finish. All forensic evidence is circumstantial, but Gray's findings are compelling. It's quite unusual to look at an anchor and find a positive level on it. If you were to pick up a substantial number of anchors, you'd probably find that none of them actually would be deposited and never attached to them. David Davis's yacht, the Lady Jane, is scoured for more evidence. CSIs find just three human hearts. Why is he flopping? <laughs> is he applauding my goal? <laughs> examination of the inside and the outside of that. The that fucking cost up. So on they go again, and every indication that Ray Arlo yes. just strolled of entering here. Uh, a degree of hair and fibers that we were able to seize from uh, soft finishes within the gallery. Colin Dark is the scientist assigned to the case. We cut off the roots and sent those for DNA analysis. The DNA test gave us a match with that test we found at the scene to Ronald Platt's reference DNA sample. Match probability of 1 in 3 million. The dragnet is tightening around David Davis. The fact that CSIs have found no blood is no surprise to them. Suarez, you suck. to find Ronald Platt's blood on the boat is not an unexpected result. Someone can receive a blow to the head, land them unconscious, so they're disabled and can be then manhandled off the boat to go down the river. That might leave the small tuft of hairs behind, but it doesn't split the skin, so there's no bleeding and no blood that's left behind. Because they're knocked out. It came out very empty, yes it did. But uh, as we know, not all uh, not all injuries will produce profuse amounts of blood. Um, so uh, the absence of blood has not been has been no crime. It'd be very nice to find lots of blood and be able to prove that is the blood of the deceased. But it's not always possible, uh, and it certainly wasn't on this occasion. Now investigators believe they have all the pieces of the puzzle. Well, Is he going in there? Yeah, was one of the and I will say again, I can't thank you enough for all your help, especially in the last few days. Well, they don't longer have the ball. No, really. You're the only friend I have. <laughs> I just have a feeling, you know? Felipe, this and time here's the bar. Just not looking confident in possession. Two minutes of stoppage time coming up. Hazard. Oh, what? Oh, Jesus. What a whist. Yes. Rip win. Technicians download the last date, time, and position from Davis' GPS. July 20th, 1996, 9 o'clock p.m. Just under four miles from where the fisherman snagged the net last night, and within the timeline left by the stock Rolex watch on the dead man's arm, 
Police now believe they have enough evidence to go for it. victory there. There is a final unexpected twist. Interpol informed British police that their suspect is not David Davis at all. His name is Albert Walker. He is a Canadian. The real David Davis is a car salesman whose identity Walker stole in 1990. Now the story gets even more bizarre. Noelle Davis is really Sheena Walker. She was 15 when she went